Okay, I'm sure your ass is all the time, but what are you eating? And is it really gross? It's gelatin. Um, I pushed for human brains. I said, guys, I'm method. Give me what you got. They said no. Uh, it's it's pretty disgusting. Gelatin covered in corn syrup is never going to be good, but it's it could be worse. So uh, it's fine. <laughs> How do you feel about being an action figure? I honestly am so excited. I haven't seen it in the flesh yet, but um, Raul and Malcolm went, I think, yesterday and, and, and took photos, and they said that there's like interchangeable hands and heads. <laughs> so cool, like chopsticks that you can put on. It's great, it's very, very flattering. So how have you been uh, keeping uh, your character's personality grounded since every episode she's experiencing like new personalities on top of her underlying personality? I think the helpful thing with, uh, you know, each time Liv eats a brain, she takes on these things and these characteristics and skills that could be, they can be funny or they can be compromising, but I think that knowing the relationships that she has with the other characters and uh, the overarching kind of themes and storylines, it, it, it would, I can't imagine it not being grounded. I can't imagine not investing in that and not feeling like there's huge stakes uh, for Liv. So for me, it's like, um, it's like when you're at a funeral and you can still laugh. Like, I mean, often that people do. Like, it, it brings out the most sort of silly or distracted or heightened versions of yourself. But the actual experience that you're going through, it's still very um, loaded and grounded and filled with kind of gravity. What's your favorite part about playing Liv? She's such a fun character. I love the variety. I love the fact that Liv, I mean, to be honest, in the flashback sequences when we've seen her, things were too easy. Like, it was all going in one direction, it was all very smooth, and she's in love, and had a great job and everything. I think this has been the best thing for her. It's really shaken her up, and obviously it's been very compromising in many senses, but she's found new parts to herself. She's become a lot more interesting and complex and courageous, and, um, you know, I think it's been a real character-building experience. So, you know, fingers crossed she's able to keep the tragedy at bay for a while, and, and there have been some really good things about who she's discovered um, in herself now that she's a zombie. It seems like after the relationship and friendship drama of season one, season two's kind of loving with her family based on the, the end. Are you looking forward to spending more time with, with them? Absolutely. I mean, um, in season two, it's going to be interesting because out of her friends and colleagues, there's only now Kai Fabno who doesn't know. Uh, but with her family, she's managed to keep that quite separate. She's put people in difficult situations. She's been put in difficult situations. I think there's going to be a lot of struggle with forgiveness and um, being able to be connected and genuine and intimate with her family because a secret like that is, I mean, I don't know, I'm a terrible secret keeper of stuff myself. I, I don't like it. I like being able to be open and honest with the people that I love and I think that I've definitely tried to bring that to live as well. But that's a, a painful thing to have to hold from people. So the relationships with their family are going to be difficult. Um, you know, for Liv, she didn't want to tell anybody because she was so scared of being abandoned and isolated. And with Major and Peyton both, they felt betrayed and she has kind of had her worst fear realised. So I think that's, that's going to be interesting season two, whether they are able to forgive her and whether um, they come back into her life and in what capacity. And it's going to be, it's, it's hard enough with that. To be honest, like I think if her mum doesn't go, it might be great. <laughs> might be the one person she can talk to and just be... Um, Feel, feel like she's not being judged. Do you think Liv would ever try a spray tan and try to fit in with everyone? <laughs> I actually love that Liv has just acknowledged she looks different now. She's not the same. I mean, it's so fun for me to book a show that is on a network where there's a lot of really beautiful women that look a certain way and Liv's able, like, that they have approved and been so supportive of this character who just embraces what, who she is. Like, she looks different and, and that's great. And I think, like, just the confidence in that gives her a lot of beauty. So, uh, to me, I, I feel like, I hope she doesn't do this great And I hope she just owns it. She's got pale Skin. She should not be in the sun too much. She's fine. <laughs> I think it's interesting that the only two that don't try to fit in are her and Blaine. Those are actually the only two as opposed to everyone else. Yeah, I mean, I think Blaine's reasons are always a little more corrupt and possibly self-involved than Liv's. I think she is trying to be altruistic and trying to be a good person a lot of the time. Um, but with Blaine, I mean, it's going to be interesting now because we end season two with him and Major both being cured and we don't actually know 
it's a very untested cure. We don't know quite what the ramifications of that will be. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see quite what he is planning on doing season two to try to fit in. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about you? Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Thank you very much. We appreciate Enjoy the convention.